Hey everybody, today we are introducing our last market structure, uh, and that is monopolistic competition. Uh, you can kind of think of monopolistic competition as a combination of monopolies and perfect competition, thus the name. Um, so uh, the basic setup of a monopolistic competitor is that there's many firms existing in the market, so many that it's difficult to actually count them. Uh, there are no or very, very low barriers to entry and exit into the market. Products are differentiated, but they're similar. Uh, there is some ability to set the price of the product, and they have advertising being very important, typically. Um, so what it's a good example of a monopolistic competitor? Think a lot of small businesses. A lot of small businesses have a lot of competition and a lot of them are similar um, but you definitely have your favorites as to where you'd want to go um, good examples of this would be uh, local realtors um, you would also my favorite example of this because of course I'm always going to food is pizza places now I'm saying don't think about your Pizza Hut your Papa John's your Domino's or any of those type of chains Think about your local pizza place, the one that everybody has that they're a fan of, the local greasy pizza spot, or, you know, I guess, uh, well, no, the, the fancy pizza places, they're fewer and farther in between. But your local spot around the corner that's locally owned, there's only one of them. There's lots of those types of businesses. You can find a lot, even in a small town, typically. And what do they serve in, type, in terms of types of food? Well, most of the pizzas you're going to get are going to be around the same in terms of uh, style of pizza that they're serving. Um, the other things that they serve in terms of sandwiches and things like that, they're going to be about the same. Um, but at the same time, you know which one you'd rather go to. There might be a pizza place right around the corner, but you don't like it as much as the one a little bit further down. So that's the idea of differentiated products. You know the difference. You can tell the difference. Uh, now, sometimes the difference can be a little bit more imagined, but uh, you have enough of a difference where you can tell it and you prefer one over the other. Uh, but if your favorite place shuts down, it's not like you're going to stop eating pizza. You're just going to go to the next place down the line that you like. Um, so that's that's really the best example of a monopolistic competitor. Those types of small businesses. Uh, now, monopolistic competition in the short run, uh, it looks like a monopoly graph, really. Uh, it's just the ATC isn't as large. Uh, so the ATC of a monopoly uh, will be sort of stretched out a bit longer over a larger quantity. Uh, not that you really have to demonstrate that on a graph, but that's really kind of the only difference. Um, everything else is set exactly like a monopoly. You have your downward sloping demand curve. You're separated out uh, and below that marginal revenue curve. Your swooshing MC curve. Price and quantity is set by, um, well, quantity is set by MC equals MR. If you take that quantity, go up to the demand curve. That's how you get your price. Uh, if you're earning profits, your ATC is below your price. Um, and you find the profit box the same way you did for Monopoly. Uh, you know, price at the demand curve down to the ATC over to Y axis. The uh, box that's made is uh, the profit. If you want per unit, you just do uh, from the price to the ATC. Um, and same thing if it's a loss. If it's a loss, the ATC is above the price. And to find the loss box, you do uh, the price at the demand curve up to the ATC over the Y axis, and that gets you your loss box. So there's really not much here in terms of new things you have to learn about graphing it um, off the bat. However, there is a long run for monopolistic competitors. Because it's easy for firms to enter and exit in the market, there are uh, long run consequences. Uh, so if you think about monopolistic competitors, like many monopolies, they have a monopoly over their specific differentiated product. That's why they have these separated out marginal revenue and uh, demand curves. That's why it's not looking like a um, like a perfect competitor. However, since there's so many of them, um, they will have a long run in terms of entry and exit to the market. 
uh, because it's so easy to enter and exit. So if firms are earning profits, if firms are earning profits, then firms, new firms will enter the market. Kind of makes sense. It's exactly the same thing that was happening with market competition. Now, what happens uh, for monopolistic competitors, however, is that as new competitors enter the market, they will take away some of the market share that the individual firms used to have. So if you were looking at a monopolistic competitor that had that was earning profits and new firms enter the market, demand for that firm's product and marginal revenue along with it will shift to the left. And it'll eventually take you to this point where it is long run equilibrium. ATC needs to be tangent to the demand curve at the profit maximizing price. So demand shifts left until this point. Now, what students frequently try to do here is they try to have marginal cost intersect uh, ATC, ATC at that price. That is extremely difficult to do and annoying to look at as a grader. MC should be intersecting ATC at ATC's lowest point, always. And it's okay that that's to the right of the profit maximizing uh, price. So draw it this way. It's so much easier, and it really demonstrates that you know what you're doing. Um, don't try to finagle the graph so everything intersects at the same spot. When graders look at that, we look at it, laugh a little, and then try to see if you actually did it right or not. It becomes a question. Whereas if you draw it like this, there's no question. So please, uh, draw it like this. Now, if firms were earning losses, if ATC was above the price, well, then firms will exit the market in the long run. And when they exit the market in the long run, then you're going to get um, demand and marginal revenue uh, shifting to the right for individual firms because they increase their market share. As they increase their market share, it, demand and marginal revenue shifts right until you get to the long run equilibrium point. Uh, if you were wondering about the uh, the short run shutdown and all that stuff, that all applies exactly the same way as you had it for monopolies and perfect competition. It's just set by the ABC. So the ABC is above the price, you shut down in the short run. If the ABC is below the uh, profit maximizing price, you continue to produce uh, in, in order to minimize losses. So if we compare monopolistic competitors to perfect competition, uh, here's some of the, uh, the differences uh, and the similarities. Uh, this, is, this is a favorite type of question on the AP test. Uh, so long run economic profit is zero for both of them. So this is how it, it kind of acts like a perfect competitor. And that has to do with the free entry and exit into the market. So in the long run, your economic profit is zero. You earn a normal profit. Uh, meaning that your ATC equals your price. Um, in the long run, uh, your perfect competitor is um, at a point where your marginal cost equals your MR equals D equals AR equals P or your Mr. Dark curve. And that is equal to your ATC, which is at your minimum of your ATC, meaning that it is productively efficient and allocatively efficient. Monopolistic competitors they are not there. The ATC might equal the price, but it's not at the minimum of the ATC, so it's not productively efficient. And it's greater than where your MR equals MC level. Um, your demand is not equaling um, your MC. So if your demand isn't equaling your MC, uh, you are not uh, going to be efficient, allocatively efficient either. Uh, whereas your perfectly competitive market is going to be allocatively efficient. Uh, now, MR equals MC in quantity for both. That's the profit maximization rule uh, in terms of output. Uh, it's always going to happen. Price is always set by the demand curve. Once again, always going to happen. Uh, and monopolistic competitors will result in deadweight loss. The graph is nearly identical to a, a monopolist. So the deadweight loss is found exactly the same way, quantity. Uh, marginal cost curve and demand curve. Uh, the triangle made by those three curves gets you your um, dead weight loss.
So to expand on that, um, monopolistic competitors do create that deadweight loss because price is greater than your marginal cost. Um, but we do tolerate this a bit more amongst uh, monopolistic competitors because differentiated products provides a benefit to customers. Uh, customers want that choice. They don't want everything to be exactly the same. Um, you know, Philadelphians love to argue over which is our favorite cheesesteak place. Those cheesesteak places are, for the most part, monopolistic competitors. It's fairly easy to jump in and make and uh, open up a new cheesesteak spot. Um, there, there's relatively low barriers to entry there. Uh, and they all, for the most part, serve about the same food um, in terms of what physically they're serving. Now, as you know, there are differences in terms of who has their favorites where. We argue about it all the time. Uh, so uh, th there is a benefit just due to personal taste, if you will. Uh, and that is just the basics of monopolistic competitors. There's one more uh, lecture you're going to have to know about them, and that has to do with product differentiation.